You're listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, with your host, Vivian Bell. Great day and welcome to the podcast, She Who Believes. I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. I'm always excited to be here with you guys. And um, this week, uh, the title of this week's podcast is um, very, very important and dear to me. Not that the others are not, but like... Um, I've, I've seen God move and I just want to just share with you guys today that it is absolutely important that we pray. So the title of today's podcast is When We Pray. So often we're told what we should do, but we're not told how we should do it. So today it's going to be more of an instructional type podcast. You might be thinking, I don't need nobody to tell me how to pray. Well, then this isn't for you. And maybe you might need someone to remind you to lay your heart at the altar when you pray and to pick up awareness and lay down any arrogance. Um, But anyway, when we pray, I have people say to me often, um, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? And I'm cool with that because I love to pray because I understand the power of prayer and I willed it as much as I need to. And um, that's usually continuously. And um, let's talk about the continuous prayer. We'll start there. So if you're anything like I was as a young girl, I thought to myself, Lord, I'm never going to make this. Like you've given us so many things that seem so impossible. Like I can't pray all the day long. Like, Lord, how am I supposed to do this? And the reality is, is that prayer can be continuous when it becomes a part of your life, when it becomes the breath and the air that you breathe, when you start to understand who God is and what prayer really is and what prayer is not. Um, How you sound when you pray is not as important as people might be led to believe it is. Like when I say sound, it's as in words that you use, the these and the thous and the arts, arts and thouists and all of those things from King James Version. Or you don't have to sound like um, based on your grammar, uh, perfect or uh, in a particular way. You also don't have to have a certain level to your voice. I pray sometimes out loud. Sometimes I pray bold and strong. I pray like I'm trying to tear down every stronghold that hell is trying to bring up against my children because that's exactly what I'm doing. And then there are times where I just pray in the spirit, whether it's speaking in tongues or just in my mind, um, because God hears us. He's the only one who can. The enemy cannot. He don't have that kind of power. And sometimes the only thing you can do is think a prayer. You don't even have the time to open your mouth to say it, like when you're watching an accident getting ready to happen. Um, uh, I guess it's been about a year and a half ago, my daughter and I were driving and Behind me, I saw this truck come. Like, I saw the truck weaving in and out of traffic, right, as I looked at my rear views. And I was praying. I'm like, Lord, look at this fool. Bless this fool. I'm just being honest. That was my prayer. Lord, bless this fool. Help him protect the people on the road, right? So then I'm watching him weave in and out, in and out, in and out. And as he weaved and snatched around us, he slid over over two other lanes to the right of him, not being able to see a car that was actually already there. So it, to avoid hitting the car, he swerved off the road and he hit an electrical, like a one of those huge light poles. When I tell y'all all I could think was Jesus, I didn't even have enough time to get Jesus out of my mouth. And literally that pole went up in the air. When I tell y'all God had to let an angel catch that pole because there is no way that pole, when he hit it, should not have fallen off on his car and how that pole went up in the air, went over his car and landed safely in the grass. No one got hit. No one got hurt. It didn't tear down the electrical lines that it should have. Um, Like literally, legitimately, it was a thoughtful prayer, right? A, a prayer that I only thought but could not speak out of my mouth. But, but it was heard in the spirit. I absolutely believe that I have so many other testimonies that I can share with you guys about how a thought moved things in the spirit because see we are both spirit and flesh and so my spirit is operating in that place where my thoughts are right and so to think it that's my prayer now I'm not saying that when you think for if you think for a quick moment like oh I hope I wish she would bump her knee on the whatever I'm not saying you do that but if you did I'm not saying that that particular thought is God saying that are you saying to God like Lord that's what I really want to happen no that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying when there's an intentional thought directed towards God directed towards heaven even if it's a, a split second thought and you're like I don't even know um 
how to like what to how to pray, what to pray, and in that moment, uh, you know what what's going on and what's happening. Um, I shouldn't say what's going on and what's happening. Um, a phone call ran over across the the thingy as I'm I'm recording. But when you are in a situation and you are like, I don't know how to respond to this, or like it's so quick, just like when that phone call came in and it threw me off. But instead of allowing something to throw you off, your thought immediately goes to God. Then what you you, you just directing your heart towards God. He's heard you. He's he's hearing you. The heaven is moving on your behalf. Angels are ready to help and protect you. Right. So prayers can be silent prayers. Prayers can be um, just once we say out loud, it could be boisterous. It could be silent. It could be just a whisper. And I've read different things where someone says you shouldn't whisper a prayer or you shouldn't pray silently when you're in the presence of other people. I, 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 I feel like so much theology or people's opinions are seen as theology when it's just them giving their opinions, right? Um, and I'm sharing this because so many people feel like what they hear, like I can't do that. I can't pray like that person prays. Well, how about you understand that we didn't start out praying like this, right? I told you guys I was fearful. I was going to hell because I didn't think I could even ever pray continuously. And now my mind is always directed in the place to speak to God about a thing. I'm not saying I always do it because then that would mean I'm Jesus and I'm not because I'm not perfect. There are times where my mind goes to a place and then I have to come back and say, Lord, teach me how to pray. Let my first thought let my first words be what you desire for them to be and seeking you and praying to you getting your direction on the situation but what prayer is not is something that you have to do to check a box as far as saying okay I, I prayed today and not I you know I'm holy enough or it's not something that you have to check the 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 um did your voice elevate at a right place? Did you use the right words? Prayer is not that. What prayer absolutely is, is a conversation with God. And so the more we pray, the more we understand God's heart towards us, his love for us. The more that we understand what prayer really is, the more we will go to God in prayer. When we realize that prayer is a conversation with our father who desires to have a relationship with us, who is listening for us, who has angels that are assigned to our lives, sitting perched like birds ready to fly at the word and to move at the word of God coming out of our mouths by faith when we understand that prayer is indeed a weapon and not like our weapon just to use towards my enemies of like Lord get my enemies no when you recognize the wep- the weaponry that you have in the spirit you you will not even desire to use it in a way that is like um evil or divisive right you will you will be like you will find yourself praying for your enemies and so the bible tells us that we absolutely can and should because it tells us that we should but i want you to know that god will give you the strength the more you pray to him even when you're coming to him and saying lord i know you see what my enemies are doing the more you lay at your feet at the feet of god um, also at your feet because you're putting the, if you put things that are are um are, are that seem like they're defeating you 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 visualize them at your feet and then you pressing on them with your feet God has already given you power and authority to trample over the enemy so when you put them in your mind that they are at your feet because you have laid them at the feet of God then honey your prayers change because then even though you know that these people are still coming for you doing the things that they are doing you also know that God the God that you serve the one and only true God our heaven Heavenly Father has not only seen it, but he's heard your prayers. So talk to God. That is exactly what prayer is, a conversation with God. But honey, it's not one-sided. Prayer is two-sided. There are times where we come into a place of prayer, communion with God, where we are listening to God, that we show up attentively just wanting a word from him. And not because I need this word so that I can believe you for this million dollars. That's nothing wrong with any of that. But there are words that God will give you daily. He will give you downloads, as I like to call them, on what to do next, what to say next, how to act. And my prayer has been, Lord, teach me how to pray so that when I encounter any situation, my first thought, my response, my life, my breath is to pray to you first, is to talk to you first. I'm going to tell y'all, prayer changes everything. And that's not just a, a, a colloquialism. That is a real life thing. I've experienced over this last week, um, a week ago today, something came into uh, or t- attempted to come into my family and attempted to come and cause a wreak havoc in the life of one of my children. And um, I immediately was like, 
Lord, as all the thoughts were coming that were trying to tempt me to be offended, to be angry, to be anything, Lord, show me how to pray in this situation. Show me what to do. And God reminded me, you absolutely are wielding the right weapon. It's prayer. You're coming to me. I'm the only one who can fix this. If you say something, you're going to blow this up. But if you say something to me instead of to your child, I will speak to your child. Your child hears me. And so not only did I pray to God, I remember the scripture that says that our um, when we come to God, we can ask him anything. And then if we pray his will, we know that he's heard us. And not only do we know that he's heard us, but we be- we know that we will have what we ask of him. And so when I got done with the initial prayer, and it was a continuous prayer throughout the week, but then that prayer turned into a praising and a worshiping and a fasting. And so all of those things were my prayer incorporated together. But at, the, at some point, Lord, I thank you for your spirit. I made a decision to de- make a declaration. And I, I, I gave a time limit to this thing and not that I was saying that it needed to go on for the entire week. But I said before the, by this time next week, before a week has ended, this thing is going to be resolved. This thing will go no, no further because at the end of the day, there was time related to this. The devil was trying to push with time and he was trying to convince my child that they needed to make a choice and a decision because of time. And because time was created for man. And I've told you guys this multiple times. God did not create us to create time to bind us by it. He created us for First, and then he gave us time so that we can understand how to properly use it, manage it, and steward it, okay? So time is not our master. We master time. And so because I understood that, I knew that this was the enemy at play, and I begun to pray. When I tell y'all that that thing became, and I watched little by little, little by little, and, and, and little bit by little bit, as one of my friends uh, would say, um, my, <laughs> one of my friends, he told me for years, little bit by little bit, and I'm like, no, he's like, you out here running on this water, just little bit by little bit. But I had that same fear that the enemy tried to use with my kids that if I don't get this done by a certain time it's not going to happen and what the enemy does he instills fear or brings a false narrative of what's going on and what's happening so Lenar Hayes I thank you for that for that always reminding me little bit by little bit but let me tell y'all something. Little bit by little bit, day by day, I watched God break down the walls of what was happening and that had come against my child's heart and his mind. And he sent a prophecy and a vision through someone else that he allowed to link in with the vision that he had given me. And so throughout that time, as I seeked him in prayer, he he spoke through dreams, through visions, through prophecies from prophets. He spoke through just his word over our lives and through the scripture. He was continuous with his confirmation as I prayed. And I'm not saying this because I feel like I got a carte blanche, a carte blanche on prayer. No, as children of God, we have the power to pray. And when we pray believing, we see things happen. We will see them move because that's what God tells us. He's given us faith. He's given us power, dominion, authority, and mouths to use and to speak to things because we are made in his image. When God saw darkness in the on, on in the face of the deep, he said, let there be light. And everything that had to come create the sun and the moon and the stars came together in obedience to the word of God because they absolutely already existed. They understood their purpose, but him and his infinite power spoke to them. That same infinite power works through and in us. So it is time for you to start speaking to a thing. Speak first to God so that he can direct you on how to how to speak and how to pray, which is basically commanding things to happen when you are praying for these things to take place, you are saying light it up. In essence, just light it up. So even throughout the week, I heard this in a, in a, in a sermon, and I said, you know what, God, light it up. Light up my, my child's, uh, uh, in, uh, my child's um, re- revelation of you. Light up their mindset to see a truth for what it is and to expose the darkness. Light up their, their, their confidence and uh, 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 tear down the spirit of pride that the enemy is trying to put in their hearts. Lord, light up their spirit that they will trust and know that they still hear your voice and that they will obey it. Light up these finances. Light up this business, this ministry, and every single thing else. Today, I pray that you will pray because when we pray, things happen. God is delighted. Heaven moves in our direction and we see heaven come to earth in every situation of our lives. When Jesus said, when they said, uh, Master, teach us how to pray. And he said, uh, we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth 
at, at, let thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. He's saying, let earth line up with what heaven looks like. In heaven, all things are perfect. In heaven, all things are provided. In heaven, every and there, there are no gaps. So that means that if there are gaps here, there are things in heaven to fill those gaps. So as we seek God, as we pray, we will see gaps filled, people healed diseases, strongholds, curses, and all of those things setting people free. Be bold this day, this week, and pray like you have never prayed before, full of fervor, vigor, and faith. I am praying for you. And as we pray, we will see miraculous things happen. So much that a miracle isn't a one time here or one time there that but that we are living the miraculous life because our life is just a continuous series of miracle after miracle after miracle because miracles are done through the supernatural power of God and we thank him for doing it in advance thank you guys for listening for trusting me to impart to you the things that God has given to me over these last six years, I do not take it lightly. Know that I am praying. You have been prayed for. I will continue to pray for you. And I thank you all for praying for me. God bless you and have the most amazing week. You are listening to the podcast, She Who Believes. Thank you for joining us today. May your faith be counted unto you as righteousness.